Hello, fellow rebel capitalists. Hope you're well. Been seeing in the news a lot lately this push towards price controls. I started talking about this months ago, and I think it really illustrates the point that economics is actually really easy just so long as you've never taken a class in economics. Meaning that as long as you got some common sense, you can pretty much see what's coming down the pipeline as far as prices, what the government most, will most likely do. You don't have to learn this stuff in a book. In fact, I think that's counterproductive. And so we as rebel capitalists know that the economy is built around asset prices. We know that if the stock market crashes, that uh, the Fed will try to come in and save the day, but they could be painted into a corner if we still have high rates of consumer inflation because this inflation is just the kryptonite for politicians being reelected. So you can imagine how that phone call would go to Jerome Powell from Joe Biden if the market crashed by 20% in two weeks, the Fed was coming out saying, okay, well, we're thinking about doing more QE. We're going to do, we're going to throw everything at it except for the kitchens or in, di in addition to the kitchen sink, maybe. <laughs> That's what they'll say, uh, like they did back in March of 2020. But then Biden comes out and says, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got headline CPI going from 6.8 to 7.0 to 7.5. If you do that, it could throw gas on the inflationary fire. And if inflation continues to persist at this rate or get worse, there is a zero chance that I get reelected. And so then Powell says, okay, what do you want me to do? Because if I don't do anything, the market's going to continue to crash. And if it continues to crash, then you're definitely not going to get reelected. So what, what you put the politician, and if we are to, if we assume which I think is the only thing that we know with total certainty that politicians' number one priority is being reelected, that what do you do if you're the Biden administration? Just, just put yourself in that position for a moment. Just try to pretend that you have no moral North Star. You have no ethics whatsoever. You have no principles. You have no backbone. And your singular objective in life is just to get people to vote for you what would you do in that circumstance it's easy price controls that's your only lever that you can pull that's the path of least resistance and that gives you a lifeline to say that listen uh you know we aren't going to practice this austerity we know that doesn't work and the stock market's going down we have a crisis in our hands we're, uh, uh, we're going to continue to send out UBI or do whatever type of deficit, deficit spending we need to do because that's what we have to do to quote unquote fix the economy. But since prices are running high, well, we can just implement price controls that worked in the 1940s or the Keynesians like to think that it worked in the 1940s and therefore we'll implement it again today. Why? Because I'm a president that is willing to take bold action and stand up for the poor and middle class. I'm not going to allow these greedy entrepreneurs and business owners to take advantage of you by indiscriminately raising prices to screw the little guy. You see, obviously, this is you can see them framing it this way right now. And it again, it doesn't take a, a degree in economics to figure that out. It's just simply just common sense, as long as you start from the position that politicians have no ethical North Star and they will do anything that they need to do, including destroy the economy, knowingly, willingly destroy the economy, if that means the ability to buy more votes and a higher probability of being reelected. So I, we've been talking about this for months on this channel. You guys know that. And now once we go into the news, you see the media really talking about this at great lengths. So check this out. 
just nine hours ago, should the government control the price of food and gas? And this is from CNN. So what do you think their conclusion is? I haven't even read the article, but I can guess. Of course, we should. <laughs> of course, the government should control this. So, and again, guys, it takes us to this mentality of central planning. And th there's so many people in the world today. In fact, here's one of them right there. The gal at the IMF talking about central planners. But there's so many people in the world today that just have this, okay, there's this group of very, very smart people. And everyone else is just dumb. And therefore, we cannot put the future of our economy and, and society in the hands of all those dumb rubes in the real economy. We can't let them make their own decisions. Heavens no. There's too much at stake. We need to give all the power and the control to the central planners, to the smart ones, to the enlightened few. and then. That will make society better. That will give us the highest probability of a desired outcome, increasing the standard of living. And this is assuming they have good intentions, which is debatable. But you see, if you had that worldview that to start off, that uh, people just left to their own devices will make really bad decisions. And therefore, there's a small group of people that should be making all the decisions for everybody. Well, then it makes sense. Well, why on earth would these people not have the power to lock you up in a cage? 2020. Why on earth would we not give these people the power to force small and mid-sized businesses to shut down? Why would these people not have the power to force all the dumb idiots that are too stupid to think for themselves? Why would we not give them the power to force the dumb idiots to inject a foreign substance into their body. And to take it a step further, why would we not force those people to inject that same foreign substance into the body of their five-year-old? We even saw the uh, video from Australia earlier today where the Australian government is literally telling 14-year-old kids to ignore your parents. Just do what the government says. Just do what the central planners say because we, we know what's best. Right. So if you had this mindset, is it a stretch to say that that you think that the government should control the prices of goods and services in the economy? Of course not. Of course not. So you see all of these media groups like CNN, who usually are very sympathetic towards cent central planning because they have this worldview that there are a few group. There's a small group that's intelligent and they need to have all the control and the power. Uh, they subscribe to that worldview. So this is my way of saying, I haven't even read this article, but my guess is the conclusion is that they're going to be sympathetic towards price controls. Let's see. It was done before, typically during times of crisis. Oh, well, here we go. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's give them the, let's try to be objective here. The answer to the question resounding is, is no for most mainstream economists. Lifting or limiting how much a company can charge will distort Markets, they argue, causing shortages and exacerbating supply chain problems while only temporarily reducing inflation. Yes, yes, common sense stuff. They go on to say price controls can, of course, control prices, but they're a terrible idea, uh, says David Otter, a professor of economics at MIT. Asked whether price controls similar to those in the United States in the 1970s could reduce inflation over the next year, less than a quarter of economists surveyed agreed. This person says, just stop. Seriously. <laughs> there we go. I, and this guy was, uh, looks like, in the Council of Economic Advisors for Obama. The attitude toward price controls appears to be similar in Washington where policymakers have shown little enthusiasm. Still, with the inflation rate at four-decade high, midterm elections approaching price controls could feature in future debates about how to reduce prices. So they go on with the problem of price controls. I'm waiting for the punchline here. I'm Honestly, I'm shocked that they're not making an argument for price controls. 
free market or price controls. They talk about Nixon. Modern politicians tend to put their faith in the Federal Reserve's ability to control inflation, but the central bank may struggle to address price hikes that are caused by supply chain issues. There we go. And then they say price controls, it seems, are still a bridge too far. Wow. Hey, I tell you what, I'll be the first person to condemn the mainstream media, but I will also be the first person to congratulate them when they actually do something right. So I never thought I'd say this, <laughs> at least not today, but CNN, bravo. I mean, okay. That was actually a pretty objective story. Wow. How refreshing. And maybe this goes back to CNN being purchased. I've done several stories on that, but if you guys haven't heard the news, about two months ago, CNN was bought out by, I believe, Discovery Time Warner, and the person that was in charge, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but kind of the head honcho uh, now at CNN said specifically that they were going to go back to objective journalism. And I don't know if he used the word propaganda to say to describe what they had been doing over the past few years, but he was not polite in, in any way, shape or form when he described kind of the dark path that they've gone down in this move towards just completely bias uh, media and reporting. And he said he wanted them to get back to objective journalism. Maybe this is an example of that. I sure hope so. So let's go back to kind of the list of news articles. So we got CNN there. Spike in inflation reignites debate, debate on price controls. We've got The Guardian. We've got New York Magazine. These are all a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, one day ago, four days ago, five days ago, six days ago. I just wanted to uh, go over kind of how much the media is talking about this. Because I think the more we hear this in the media, uh, even if it's objective, like CNN seems to be with this article, uh, I think the higher the probability that we actually see it come to fruition. And the more the politicians are really going to push this idea, obviously on, on the left are the ones that are trying to stay in political power. So this is, some, and then actually Forbes uh, did something to Steve Forbes and I don't know if it was through the magazine or this was him just kind of uh, ranting on price controls. I retweeted it today. He said, uh, there is growing talk that if inflation doesn't ease soon, the White House may impose temporary price controls on voter sensitive products such as beef, chicken, gasoline, heating oil and various prescription drugs. So I this is what I've been saying. Completely agree with uh, Steve Forbes here. And uh, again, I think the probability is increasing because of the rate at which we are hearing price controls discussed in the mainstream media. And I want to remind everybody that price controls result in supply shortages or supply shortages will occur if we get price controls. Now, let's step back and think that through. We saw this happen in the 1970s, but there was a big difference between now and the 70s. Uh, the 70s, we did not have massive supply shortages going into price controls. So now, as you guys know, living in the United States in 2022, we have huge shortages. I mean, just go down to your local grocery store. I was just at Whole Foods and... I was saying about a month ago that 10, 15% of the shelves barren now, boy, it's crazy. Probably 20, 25%. I, I mean, it's just wild to see shelves, just nothing there at Whole Foods. And I'm sure you guys have seen this in your area. So if we know that uh, we'll see shortages as a result of price controls, 
how does that work if we get price controls when we already have shortages of goods and services, or at least of goods? The answer is that it further exacerbates what we have seen in 2020, 2021, and 2022. So my point is, if you think supply shortages are bad now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just wait till we get price controls, and then you are really going to see shortages at the grocery store uh, or really wherever you do your shopping. I mean, we could see gas lines again like we saw in the 1970s and for those of you who are really young just google that look at a few pictures that was right here in the united states uh, we could see rationing um, we could see shortages in housing to where people are having to move in with one another because rents just continue to increase there's no more supply coming online it could get really ugly really really quick so we have to be aware of that as prudent investors and to really use that information and and calculate that into our prediction for probabilities of certain outcomes in the future when we're looking at our portfolio in terms of the stock market the bond market um, maybe even owning specific companies these are the uh, macro components that i think that you need to be very cognizant of right now and thinking through if you're wanting to set up your portfolio in a way where the math is really on your side going into 2022 and beyond. So main takeaways there, guys. Uh, I think we're talking about price controls more. I think that's the path of least resistance for politicians. I think as the media talks about price controls more often, the probability goes up that we see price controls. If we do get the price controls, then expect the supply shortages that you are seeing to increase dramatically. Uh, which will have a huge negative impact on the economy and could have significant impacts on your portfolio in terms of stocks, bonds, specific companies, and real estate. All right, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. We'll see you in the